happening. Paula is going to be um, telling, she's been meeting with Susan Chestnut of Seaview Farm in Port Rush. Am I right? That's right. Um, yeah. Who's a pig breeder in Northern Ireland. And over to you, Paula, you can tell us all about what's go what goes on there. Yeah, uh, uh, Susan um, and her partner Shay um, O'Neill are a, a young couple and they um, <clears throat> the family farm is in Port Rush, like they're fourth, third or fourth generation. Um, but um, they, uh, it's a dairy farm, but she has introduced some pork onto it now, some pigs. And uh, they they actually have her brother, who's a dairy farmer, has a vending machine now. So it's just quite a big thing for us. You know, I know that you have them in the rest of the UK, but there, in the summer it caused a few traffic jams in Port Rush up in this rural road because people were queuing up for uh, for milk straight from the farm, which is great. So we actually did a dinner um, on Friday on Saturday night. Um, I'm doing this range of dinners in a in a, in a cafe in Port Rush, lovely cafe, just looking out at the sea. It closes in the winter. So because I'm not traveling to Borough Market or Turin or anything, like that, I'm at home a lot. So we're doing these dinners and I called it Cook and the Farmer. And we did, uh, they were the first ones on Saturday night. So we used their their brother's um, nude, uh, ricotta, made ricotta uh, to, to do a nudie. And then also did um, the Smoke the Whey. And that's basically the recipe that I've done in this video that's coming up actually. So. Um, if, if you want to enjoy the video now and then maybe and hopefully enjoy it and then come back if anybody's got any questions that'd be okay Nia. you that, be, that sounds like a great idea so that you, you can forward the the tips for the others watching yes yeah, thank great. you great <laughs> so i think shane's gonna hit the hit the play button <laughs> hopefully <laughs> no <laughs> they say never work with technology or children or animals. Give me one moment. <laughs> We're just doing that now. So, share screen. First of all, we'd love to thank Paula McIntyre for all her hard work and, and helping us. Us promote our produce at the, at the food festival. Here at CV Farms, we farm two main breeds of pigs, the Berkshires and Middle Whites. Let's take a look at them. Over here, we have a young wee batch of Berkshires just joined us here today. Berkshires are one of the UK's oldest pig breeds. Queen Victoria had a prized uh, herd of Berkshires. They are renowned all over the world for their superior taste and marbling. We also have the Middle Whites. The Middle Whites are succulent pork and they have a very sweet fat cover which is fantastic for cooking with. We believe in the highest possible standards of animal welfare. Our pigs are outside from the moment they're born to the day they're processed and treated with the utmost respect and care. We farm regeneratively here trying to reduce the global impact of agriculture on the environment. Uh, our farm method sequesters carbon, so not only are we carbon neutral, but we're carbon negative. Thank you for watching. Bye from everyone. Hello, I'm Paula McIntyre and I'm the Slow Food Director for Northern Ireland. I'm delighted to be part of this Terra Madre Fringe. And I'm going to cook um, a couple of dishes with CV Farms um, pork. And it's Berkshire pork, Berkshire pig. We just, um, just saw Shay and Susan there in the previous video introducing you to the farm, which is in Port Rush in County Antrim, looking at the sea. I'm in Port Stewart, in County London Derry or County Derry, and just, just up the road a wee bit. So this is my kitchen. And uh, I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do a nudie with uh, some pork ragu. So the ragu first. Um, I've got some lovely mince here and um, nice um, fat in it, a good fat ratio. Um, nice hot pan, I'm gonna put some oil in it. This is a bright gold rapeseed oil, which is just from up the road and Leona and Richard that produce the rapeseed oil are big supporters of, uh, of slow food in, in, in Northern Ireland. So nice hot pan, uh, just hope that the smoke alarm doesn't go off and then we'll put in our mince. There's a bit of mince here, Oh, 
Yes, that's it. Um, and we have a house of Mr. Frito. Um, this is Bella, Anya, and Dallas. Just on a, on a bit of my rebutter. So you can, um, whenever I had it, I played for Google a few years ago. Um, and I'm still a lot about obviously about tomorrow and things like that. But um, that's really going to start on some of the first ones. So one of the things that I'm going to get there is uh, the part that I go to, which has a lot of uh, people who back and forth to Ireland and Scotland. It's sort of often a good amount of other. So it does make a difference to get to a lovely self-care clinic. So in here, we've got a very different really quick day. Um, for the sun and star of and that seems to have been quite gently for the 20 minutes now. And uh, then what I'm going to do is add uh, this, this is a uh, Pasatla. This is our closest to city Pasatla from uh, Bianca Morrow in London. This is our last jar. So this is uh, probably no longer so far, so I'm going to enjoy this. So um, there we are. I'll just take that. I have a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit CD Farms is beside um, a farm called Chestnut Farms, and the Chestnuts um, are it's, it's Susan's brother, William, and his wife Alison. They produce their dairy farmers, but they just have just uh, a, a vending machine so you can go get milk. So I made some ricotta with the milk. I'm going to use the whey in the next dish, but this is the ricotta. So basically, uh, two litres of milk, nice bit of salt. Bring it up gently to 84 degrees, give it a stir, add in about 40 ml of vinegar, and put in citric acid, curdles, leave it, put it into a sieve, let it strain, and that's it. So we've got that. Nice pinch of salt into that as well. Some parmesan. Some double bear of flour. And an egg yolk. Now I'm going to mix this and really good in it. So I, if you're going to use ricotta, ready made, ready bought ricotta, uh, just put it in a put it in a sieve just to let it drain for an hour before you do this because if you don't, your your nudie, which means naked, uh, can become quite um, loose and you don't, we don't want that, we want to do it all these together beautifully. Okay, here's that, here's that flour. That's double zero flour, by the way, and another bit of double zero. It's going to knead this very lightly. So sometimes I add herbs and things to this, but uh, in this instance, because I've got that lovely ragu and everything, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay, and then just gather it out. The ways of doing this, I'm just going to do it with little, I'm going to do the individual balls, but I'm going to just do it like I would do the So I just um, cut it up, roll it up here. Okay, and I just cut into the little dumpling shapes. And these here, what I've, so, you know what you can do is you can put them onto a tray lined with uh, parchment paper and freeze them. And then when they're completely frozen, take them out and put them in a, put them into a bag that, and, um, or a container. And then you can just cook them straight from frozen. So, it's one of those things that you can sort of get ahead with. And they're lovely. And again, it's because this is a color. It's a 
I know it's not near where the mice came from, so that's just a little time to come to that and I had a big thing to see Chris through that today. And the smell of this is all too easy to assist with this. Here's the dog's friend. I'm going to leave that in here first. Okay. I'm just going to put a bit of red wine on this way, so just a nice splash just to a nice splash of red wine. So normally um here in Audrey <coughs> we're gonna have our wee, wee um holder for our wine glass and we'll probably be um when we're looking at three o'clock now to be on glass number probably Okay, there we are. So I'm going to just put this into the into the rest of the sugo. And that just goes in there. The longer you can leave this, the better. So what I do is normally just take this, get my own, <coughs> get um, the oven uh, down to about 120, and then just put that in, leave it for about in the oven, leave it really for about two or three hours at least. Just nice, let it, maybe four, let it go nice and gentle. You know, the, the great thing with something like this here lets you know when it's ready because you can really get that beautiful smell. So I've got some hot water here. And I'm gonna just, um, just to cook our nudie. So, <clears throat> get this wee ring off here. So we've got, um, we're fast forward and, um, Four hours here, so this is our this is our like pork ragu here now. So get my hands a wee wash. So that's the pork cooked down. It's really delicious. And um, I'm going to do another wee thing with this. Now this is a put some tomatoes in the June at the beginning of the season, and I fermented them. So all to ferment them was just a. Nice big bowl of cut of tomatoes, cut in half, or if they're bigger, cut them into quarters. Um, so you get a nice big bowl, a teaspoonful of salt. You can put on fennel seeds. I put in some lovage, which I love. Um, and then just let them sit for a day, and they'll start to fizz a wee bit. And then just pack them into jars. And you get these lovely little fermented tomatoes. So these are from June, and there are bits of lovage in with that as well, which is nice as a wee. That's that there, so that's a great way of preserving. And then what I love to do is just do them, do them in June, and then do them, you know, sort of now at the end of the season, and it's got lovely contrast. So what I'll do now is just to cook off um, some of my nudie. So it's got a little lovely ricotta dumplings and a bit of salt. And while that's cooking, we just uh, put a little bowl here. Um, so what, what I love about um, Shay and Susan is they're, they're young, they're enthusiastic. I, I spent an afternoon with them recently, um, just just talking to them all. So William was there talking about his milk and, and then Shay and Susan were talking about growing mustard to, to feed the pigs. And it was just amazing to see young people having you know, such enthusiasm. And, um, and they're just, just really steeped in the slow food ethos. So um, they've got uh, four mangalista pigs now that are not too far off um, being ready. Um, actually, um, on, on next week we're going to do a, a dinner together. So and uh, they've got um, some pork and they've got copper. And I'm going to cook the copper in their smoked whey. I'm going to do something very similar in the next dish. And we're going to do that with some of the ragu as well. So, you know, combining the combining the pork and the milk is, is great. So those are not, those we need now are not too far off. And I'm just going to take them when they float. Normally they're that's it. They're so they're kind of floating there. And I will take them off into their ragu. I'm going to give this a wee mix around. If you don't like, obviously, if you, if, if vegetarian version is just leave out the, 
the meat and just, just get that nicely coated in the, in the sauce. So these are our nudies, so just into our bowl here. And get some of those nice tomatoes in with that as well. So everything here is really from the same farm. So we've got the, apart from the tomatoes of course, which are from um, just um, a wee organic grower not, not too far from here. So we've got the nudi, um, which is made with the milk from the ricotta, and then we're going to do something with the whey uh, and after this. And uh, when I've got our pork, our pork mince, and then just a nice, good, half decent sprinkling of Parmesan cheese there. And that's our first dish. So that's our CV Farms um, nudie, uh, CV, sorry, CV Farms uh, ragu, and we've got our chestnut farms from the same farm, ricotta nudie. Lovely. And a nice bottle of, nice bottle of wine. Cheers. The, the next dish I'm going to do, so I've got, I made the nudie uh, with the milk, and then when you make uh, ricotta, you, um, you, you're left with whey. So what I did was, this is, there, this is where you can get, so the, obviously it's all recyclable, so you, you buy your, your bottle and then you go back and fill it up, so it's great. Um, and uh, the, with the whey, this is whey in here now, it's not actually the milk. I have a smoking gun, I didn't bring it in here, it's just uh, one of those things, a tube, and you put in um, applewood smoke, and, um, and I've smoked this way. So um, take it from me that that does smell very smoky. So that's, uh, you don't have to do this, but I just uh, I just like to smoke things, um, so that was good. Now the pork, as you can see, just it's just a, a double chop here, and um, I've put it in a, a mixture of good old English mustard, a um, bit of salt and some flour. Um, we'll take a wee bit of um, the, the rapeseed oil from the local rapeseed oil. A bit of butter as well. Nice to grind. And I'll just take the, I've coated this one on both sides, so I'll just kind of pat that off and put that into the pan. Okay, so I'll show you down too. Nice big thick chocolate too, so and what I get is this nice bit of um, colour in that and I just get it in the hands a bit more. Yeah, I'll crack our heat up a little bit here, get a nice butter. And then you know that butter, you get that nice sort of brown butter, there's the lovely in it as well. So we're going to cook that, I've got a bit of salt in this as well, get that nicely cooked down. I've got some onion and garlic here, and that's going to form the sauce along with the whey. So even though we're cooking the pork in the whey, we're actually using the finished product um, as, a, as a sauce as well. And I know it sounds a bit weird, but it actually does. It's very nice. Uh, I make a lot of ricotta and then I sort of think of different things that I can use away with. So, um, you know, the, the, one, the one thing you sort of think um, maybe making scones or make our soda bread here. Another thing that I saw in, um, was in Iceland a couple of years ago, um, they had candy to play. So, I came home and did a really pretty much experimented with a few things. So it's, it's whey, or that up, but it's quite, there's a wee bit of salt on it, which is nice and acidity. Uh, brown sugar, I use a wee bit of golden syrup and um, some vanilla, and boil that up and keep boiling and boiling it and get this beautiful sort of salt caramel sauce. So we'll have a wee look at this now, that's not nice there. And you've got a lovely, um, I don't want to waste any of this because you see whenever you get pork fat like that and you cook it in the butter and the smell coming from that now is absolutely delicious. And I'm not gonna it's all gonna be in the sauce, so it's not gonna be all these sauces where you clean and cook it around and stuff like that. It's kind of a good thing. So that's just the onion and garlic, so let that Get down a wee bit just to get 
and make sure the color of that. And again, when onions have the, the pork chops, that's the mother, mother thing. So, so the pickle of the video was so the pickle of the So, again, I just cut that a little bit there, just around the very last half of it. And this is. <clears throat> I don't know about your smell in the world, and some of them are just cooking on pork fast with a bit of butter. Maybe some truffles from the elder, I know that. And it comes, please. And then for that stuff, now I'm going to take my smoke away. Just put my hand for that in. Not too much, so we'll flip this over halfway. Put the lid on and we'll come back to that in about 20 minutes and that should be all ready to finish off. Right, the pork's cooked, nice, that's nicely ready and then as you can see it's taken up this lovely, these lovely juices. So what I'm going to do is just take this, take a few of these. Um, a wee bit of flour sort of around the, the pork chops has thickened it slightly. Take this out here just to. Uh, this is a disaster. Oh, it's not bad, is it? I'll just put those, get those nice juices in. Just get a wee bit for this one, but I'll finish it off later. So, I've rested that. So, that's our, our smoked um, whey and our garlic and onions. So, just give that a whiff. Leeks, just local leeks, just kept the wee kept it the wee root on and then all I've done is um is uh blanched them or cooked them down nice to push them gently and then into a half pan. A wee bit of oil in that. From the same farm I have got some parsley. Just made a parsley oil and um, put in a wee bit of black garlic into it as well. And then from the garden here some sage. So we'll just let some tea leeks cook down and then we'll gather this all together. And we'll just get it up over here. See the nice big pork chop, so that's stuff in there. Take some of the juices, just this nice smoked whey, which is, you know, it's got, it's got, you've got that lovely flavour from the pork, but you've also got the mustard coming through. Really crispy sage leaves, pork and sage, lovely. And we have our leeks here, so I just really like to just colour these because they're still slightly warm. So again, I just poached them, just cut them in half, poached them in a bit of um, a wee bit of vegetable stock, and uh, then just leave them on the side there. There we go. And then I'm just going to take some of that nice oil. So we just, just parsley that blanch 10 seconds in salted water. And then just a wee bit of the, the garlic as well. And just some all around those lovely leeks there. Around our sage. And that's our dish. So that's the, um, that's our, we use the ricotta to make the nudie. So we've got the, um, we've got the, Quay that was smoked to cook our lovely Seaview Farm pork chops. So those are my two dishes for Terra Madre. Hope you enjoy them. And if you're ever in Northern Ireland, you can come and try these at Seaview Farms and Chestnut Farms. Okay, thank you. Oh, Paula, that was absolutely incredible. Oh, thank you, Nia. Lovely, oh, lovely pork, sizzle. lovely pork. The sizzling of the meat, you know, I've already had food, but I'm starving again. <laughs> and I thought, oh, you know, the um, the ragu you made, oh, that was my favourite. And then when you made the pork um, chops, oh, my goodness. Um, and, and, and the pork, yeah, the pork's just so, so lovely, Nia. And it was like, as I said, when I did the dinner on Saturday night, you know, people kept saying to me, oh, that pork, it's, it's, I've never tasted pork like that before. And I'm, well... 
if you buy mass produced pork, it doesn't really taste of anything. Whereas if you have that pork and, and they they talked very much about, um, uh, you know, Shea and Susan talked about, you know, the, allowing the pork to mature naturally and then well, you get you get just such a better meat. And there's oh, it must have been something that you cooked. That, and it wasn't the way I cooked it. It was just the taste of pork, you know, real pork. It's beautiful. And um, I think what the line you said in your presentation was, knowing where our food comes from and that's what's important that you actually meet the farmers and especially in this case meeting young people who are passionate because there are yeah. so few young people able to go into farming and then when yeah. you meet passionate young people oh you just want to give them every support and every encouragement yeah, and then they, they both have other jobs. I think um, Susan works in social work and, and Shay actually um, inseminates bull or inseminates um, uh, cows. So, um, so they, and he, he trained as a lawyer. So there's this one, and, they've, and they've, this, is their, this is actually their, their hobby, it's their passion. But, um, they, they, you know, they, they sell it, they have the, they have the milk, the brother, her brother has the milk cut with the vending machine. And then if you want to buy the pork, that you can cut, you can order it through that. So it's uh, I know they'll get. A, I know they'll, they'll after the weekend they will have they've made customers from from people who've had the dinner. And you you know the thing about it is too near when you get a nice piece of pork like that, you don't need a massive amount of it. You know you you know I think with this especially in Northern Ireland, I hate to say it, we have this thing where the plate has to be three quarters full of meat, and then you know the rest of it's spuds, and then a flickering of vegetables. So I think we need to go back to have the meat, the small amount of meat, and the rest pulses and and good vegetables and um, and you know and maybe a couple of spuds. So <laughs> I think I think the Welsh diet is about the same as well. Yeah. You know, that it's and especially living in a rural area. You know, Absolutely. the bigger the the bigger the piece of pork, the better it is. But actually. <laughs> it's important to encourage people to eat vegetables. Now, Hermione has asked, um, do you do takeaways, Paula? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll probably have to start doing that soon, Hermione. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, no, I'm not, no. But, uh, but uh, we're, we're, I'm doing these dinners now uh, and, and, and coming up to Christmas and the new year, and I'm going to feature their pork in every one of them, no matter who, maybe one, I can't do it, but um, they're, you know, I really want to, do, do different cuts of the pork and at the weekend I did the copper cut yes which is just like neck and muscly with very little fat on it and I slowly cook them in the in the in the smoked way really beautiful and not not expensive that's the thing you know we, we use these all uh, these muscly cuts and and slowly cook them they're beautiful but you mentioned that um, to smoke the way that you have a gadget. Uh, yeah. If you don't have this gadget, are there any other ways of smoking? Um, smoking. Yeah, uh, if you get a, a, a tray and um, just a, a, a roasting tray and line it with tin foil, and you can get the, the oak chips anywhere, sprinkle them over it, put a, a rack on top, and then put your um, put your way into a a heat proof container, uh, cover the whole thing very tightly with tin foil and then set it on top of a, a, a set on top of a, a gas ring or a, a hot ring. I would suggest doing it outside if you're going to do it this way because you stink your kitchen out and your whole house out. So I normally do it um, on the barbecue. You know, if I've got a gas barbecue, I normally put it in that, light that up and let it smoke, you know, until you'll see the smoke coming out and then after about five minutes, turn it off and just let it sit for 20 minutes just to infuse. So that's a good way of smoking anything. I, I would smoke yogurt like that as well, or, you know, so soak the chips in a bit of water, first of all, um, you know, for about 10 minutes and then drain them off. And then you don't get a harsh smokiness. Brilliant. Now, Marcus has asked, um, will you be filming some of these dinners and take, you know, and um, programming them, no. showing them? because <laughs> <Probably> <laughs> <not. laughs> I'm too busy cooking uh, I would love to you know I would love to do something I am terrible on social media uh, I'm just at that age you know where I'm just and it's like uh, you know and I'm sort of thing um, so yes and eventually I'd like to I had one of the staff do a couple of photographs the other night but it's just um, you know sometimes when you're cooking and 
you're running around the place. It's probably not something somebody wants to see, you know, <laughs> but I'm used to doing um, demos, you know, Nia, where everything's set up and everything, whereas uh, you cook in a, ki a small kitchen and you're running around. So, yeah, maybe we'll do one well, at some stage. <laughs> well, hopefully, maybe, um, yeah. you know, this weekend has been such a success that maybe we will, you know, to keep us going for the net, because I think it's going to be a long winter for us all, isn't it? Wherever winter, we live. Yeah. And maybe well, I have having... Four, I have yeah, I have four coming up that are fully booked. And then um, I sort of, a couple of, I'd mentioned, I was, you know, Enrico and um, Bianca Morrow, who's a great yeah. slow food supporter. Yes. Well, he has, um, you know, I thought we'll do a Christmas one and get some of his lovely red cow parmesan, you know, the, the Presidia Passata. He does a beautiful gorgonzola. Um, and uh, he's also got some um, Luca Mancini, um, the two Michelin star chef and, in Modena, he's got some of his condiments now, and we're, I'm going to bring those over for, and do a couple of Sunday sort of late lunches with those. But I mentioned it casually to a couple of people, and because I live in a tight tight knit community, I was about to advertise. I was going to advertise at the weekend, and they're more or less fully booked because of people that were there on Saturday night, which is lovely because yeah. you know that's that's my livelihood at the moment. Now, you know, because oh, okay. there's no demos, there's no food festivals, there's no you know. No, and that's it. I think we all have we've all had to adapt, haven't we? No. Exactly. It's been a big, big blow to, mm. you know, small food producers, but also to people that work in the food industry in uh, demonstrations, um, in food festivals, and it's just come to a standstill. Yeah. And there's only so much stuff you can do do in Zoom, isn't there? I mean, Zoom's great. And this is this weekend has been lovely. Actually, it was nice to be able to sit and watch all these things. That has been great. But I just think we all miss seeing oh, yes. people's eyeballs and having a chink in glasses together, don't we? That's it. And you mentioned about this um, thing in Terra Madre. Anybody's yeah, been to whole... Terra Madre? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sling, isn't it? With Where you hold your <laughs> wine glasses. I know. And no, a real a... glass. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that it's been a big blow that we haven't been able to meet up. But however, we found ways around it, which has been fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, this weekend has been lovely, really lovely. Um, I, d I moderated one of the honey, yeah. um, Sarah's honey, uh, honey demo or honey event on Friday evening, and it was just inspiring, you know. And and I just we all sort of think, isn't it going to be a lovely day when we all get to meet and sit around and taste things again together and meet together and eat together? Because you mentioned um, the brighter um, oil and the butter, yeah. and of yeah. course. Um, oh, what were they called? I'm trying to think of their name. Abernethy. Now. Abernethy, yes. yeah. Um, and we met them all, didn't we, in right. Turin? You met a whole crowd of them, yeah. There was, there was quite a few of them. We'd, we'd, um, we'd a beer maker, we'd a brewer over, we'd a brighter gold were over. Claire who, Kelly, who makes, um, make, who, who makes uh, jams and chutneys. Um, she's... Um, She's back. Uh, she she moved to Bristol, so we don't have her anymore. So, no. but yeah, we had a lovely time. We had a lovely time at Terra Madre. Yeah. And people couldn't get over all this wonderful produce from Northern Ireland. All these Italians, they were all piling onto the Northern Ireland stand. Do you remember Paula? That's and right, there was yeah. somebody selling Swiss cheese, and they weren't interested in him. No, they, they were no. just interested in. Northern Ireland, which was absolutely fantastic. Our, our smoked dulse, that was the thing that went down well. I can't remember what it was in Italian, something, a fumigato. Um, can't remember the Italian name for seaweed. But anyway, it went, it went down very well. A lot of people bought it, you know. So it was like, because when I came back um, and I, we, I'd taken all the money for the smoked dulse, and, mm. and when I came back, uh, I gave it, I gave the money to Rory, and I think he nearly died. The guy that owns the smoked dulse company. I said, I don't think you'd sell any. And I said, no, we sold it all. We could have sold more, you know, so it's great. No, it's it's a fantastic organisation. And the fact that so many different countries and so many different producers and people interested in food all come together in one place um, mm. every two years. And it made so many friendships are made as well. And Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I went first, the first time I went was in, in 2014. That's when I first met Shane. And, um, you know, and it's lovely because you, you make friendships and, and you keep in touch. 
And I think that's the great thing about slow food, isn't it? That you make these friends, but because we've got this common love of food and wine, you, 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 your paths always seem to meet, you know, somewhere, you know, somewhere unexpected. You know, it's just great, isn't it? That's the thing. I think that um, there's so you know, there's Marcus B. I think I met Marcus at Terra Madre that first time. Um, just popping up there. So that yeah. I think that that's the thing. You meet people and then you maybe meet them somewhere else. And and it's great for, for you know, maintaining friendships, isn't it? It is. And bringing all the, um, you know, interests that people have um, and bringing them together and sharing ideas, you know, like you sharing your ideas about using um, this pork and also mm -hmm. uh, how to make ricotta. Um, and yeah. that's what I wanted to ask you. I don't know if other people want to know this. But, um, <coughs> ricotta, I noticed that it was milk from their farm and it was slightly uh -huh. pasteurised. Could you also use raw milk to make yeah. ricotta? Definitely make it. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would normally make it with raw milk. I just wanted to use their milk from the farm. And they have to pasteurise it just for yes. health and safety. Obviously, it's non homogenized but, but it is pasteurised. But yes, raw milk um, is, is because it's got a slightly bigger cream content, is actually probably better for ricotta. And that sounds so straightforward how to it make is. a ricotta that you don't have to go to a supermarket. No, I know. And you get loads out of it. It's always a surprise to me whenever you make, you know, you take a couple of litres of, of milk and you can make nearly half a kilo of of ricotta. And, and if you go and buy a half a kilo of ricotta in the supermarket, that will cost you at least a fiver, if not more. And then you've got this whey left over. And I mean, and, and it's nearly as as nice as you know it's nearly as nice a product as the as actual ricotta because i would use it for you know soda bread or for scone it makes great scones actually you know so it's uh perfect you know and there's no no and, and then there's no waste at all and that's one of the big things about cooking is no waste and we've yeah. got to be far more considerate about what we we're producing um mm. and being self-sufficient as well yeah Exactly. Well, I think so. We'll not mention Brexit, Nia. No, no, no. Gosh, no. Please, no. no. <laughs> you know, things are do going so well at the moment with slow food and especially with the Terra Madre fringe and fair play to Shane. He has worked Absolutely. so hard sorting everything out. He has been a, a miracle. Well, it's a miracle, you know, how he's got everybody together. In such a short time there, yeah, it's just been magnificent, hasn't it? He's done exactly. a brilliant job. And the I thing hope is, he's having Shane a glass is of wine the now. Sorry? I hope he's having a glass of wine now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, excellent. <laughs> um, and the fact, and also people need to remember that Shane is a volunteer as well. Mm -hmm. And the amount of time that he's put into um, the Fringe it's incredible what he's done for slow food. Yeah. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, on thank you, everybody's Shane. Behalf. Yeah, cheers. Well, I, I was just, yeah, I've got cider rather than wine, but it's very good cider from, from one of our supporters, Sanford's. Um, and we had a tasting on Saturday. Um, I was saying, because Marcus Bates has been very kind and saying um, thank you to all of us. <clears throat> and I was replying to him in the chat box saying thank you to him and to, to everyone who's been watching because. Um, Everyone has been so supportive of the Terra Madre Fringe. I wanted to say thank you to Nia because she's not going to thank herself. She's very kind thanking me, but thank you to Nia. Thank you to Paul. Yeah, thank you, Nia. <laughs> because, no, thank you, Paul. Um, all of the events that have taken place, we've got a huge amount of events that have taken place in Wales and, and Northern Ireland, and all the directors have worked equally hard. Um, and in terms of their comparing as well, thank you very much to everyone. Thank you for everyone for watching. We do have one more event to go. Um, the last event um, is all about the story of the stag um, and we're going to watch the stag being stalked and then we're going to taste it as venison. It may not be the same venison but we're going to watch that story and I think my takeaway from this is that we have brought people together um, over the stories of food. We've had kind of political sessions, we've had parliamentarians, we've had leading food thinkers but we've also shared stories earlier today. We were we were speaking to a British Bangladeshi woman who was speaking about the traditional food of Bangladesh. Um, we've had cider tastings. We've heard um, about farming in coastal areas. So we, we've heard such diversity of food. Um, and I think that's what's made the fringe really, really special. 
Um, a spoiler alert, this will not be the last Terra Madre Fringe. Um, Terra Madre takes place every two years. Um, I think we will almost certainly have this annually. Um, it will be great to see my friends in person, um, Nia and Paula and many mm. of them. Mm. Um, and it'll be great to see you in Turin, but I think what we will be doing is we will have a virtual fringe as well as an a in-person, um, because the one silver lining of this is that we have brought more than 5,000 people together this weekend. Many of them wouldn't have gone to Terra Madre in Turin, um, and long may us bring those people together um, and share their stories. So um, people were very kind thanking me. Um, it is everyone else that has, that has provided the content. So thank you, Nia. Thank you, Paula. 